another Q&A on a glorious hot day on the sort of day that I never used to think was a stitching day but as I get older I just retreat from the sun and love stitching in the garden so if you're like me and you put your work on a tray and you stitch outside under a tree I really hope that you're having a beautiful wonderful time. The first contact is from Francis Tonez in response to um, me talking about bugs getting into badly framed textiles. She says, the mirror frame is just wonderful, which she's talking about Aesop's Fables um, kit, which hasn't yet come out. I love the birds, which are so colourful. If one lives in a place that gets really cold one or two days a year, each year, one could do as the Norwegians, this is in response to the, about the bugs, by the way, do to refresh their wool sweaters and put a wool piece outside. The cold will kill any creatures and kill bacteria. Now, I absolutely agree that putting... Um, a piece of needlework into freezing cold will kill the bugs but unfortunately your normal freezer will just not do it. Um, it will actually, it will kill live bugs but it won't kill the eggs so you would take it out of the freezer and moth eggs would and bug eggs would then breed quite happily so if you know anybody with a commercial freezer um, then that's fantastic. That quick freeze, commercial freezer will kill off any bugs. So you can use that method, but the other way is to use restrain or constrain, sorry, which you can get from um, the textile restoration studio in Manchester in England and possibly other conservators in other countries out of the UK have different methods. So I'm not really advising, I'm just saying that actually making a little incubating area of framing your needlework um, is not necessarily a good thing because it, it protects um, the bugs from you doing anything about them. You can't really see them until it's too late. So another um, uh, question is from hashtag 17 vash egg, egg veg, I think, saying, hello, your videos and your embroidery are amazing. Thank you for them. Could you please tell me what kind, what is the name of your fabric? I'd like to buy some like this for my embroidery too. Well, the full details of our all our fabrics are Elizabethan Evenweave, which is organic and which we very recently produced um, in response to wanting less chemical on our work and for it to deteriorate slower. Uh, that's all on the website and so is the Jacobean Linen Twill Z Twist, which we're famous for, which is a replica of the um, linen twill used from between about uh, 1680s possibly up to, um, well, it was in common use um, up until the mid 20th century. And then they went for the cheaper and slightly softer S twist, which distorts a little bit um, when you're using really heavy stitches. And that's what we want. We want, we want fabric which will hold a stitch that goes in through the same hole again and again and again. So just look on cruelwork.com. Okay. And if you search my name <clears throat> or go to the link on here, I'm sure you'll find it. Right, from YouTube Q&A 17. Lesingi Van Gogh-mo. Ooh, he or she says, how gorgeous, I want that kit. Please do a video on how you are inspired to create your designs and how you go about the design process. I actually do touch on that quite a lot on the Sunday um, antique videos because I'm completely influenced by the past and how the professionals and amateurs cruel worked in the past. So if you would like to see the design references and, and the way I talk about colours and the shape and the form and the male and female influences, just go to all those Sunday uh, videos. I'm sure uh, Karen might be able to put a magic link on for you for there. Uh, she said, I'm looking forward to seeing the replica that Miss Harriet is stitching. Will this become a future kit? Well, the answer to that is probably uh, we're not sure yet, but Harriet's stitching away and it's a really interesting method. Um, but it's way, 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 way off becoming a kit. I mean, usually we start from about two years out to produce a kit. So the Muncaster monster that's on now, you know, I'd been looking at that for 30 years. <laughs> We're going to try and be a little quicker with this one. Um, but the, um, and the one the large kit before that, the Glasgow bedspread took um, many years. And I think Laura and I worked on the um, stitch charts intensively without working on anything else for about four months. So, you know, they do take a huge amount of 
paid work to do and very skilled work so uh, we are just you know trying to chug through that and we'll just see where we go with it but it definitely won't be this year so that's I'm sorry you'll just have to keep seeing little glimpses of it until then but in the meantime we will be um, producing the uh, the Aesop's fable mirror frame and lots of little animal kits to go with it so we're working very hard on that at the moment another question um thank you so much for the excellent information can you recommend this is from the same person actually lisongi um can you recommend good books that teach you how to do pattern making i'm not a pattern maker i think i think probably you're because it's English is going to be a second language and I probably don't speak your language what you're probably asking for is the, the design so the actual design is uh, influenced as I say from the past so just look at the Sunday antiques ones to see that so from um, Insta Gifford this is from an Instagram comment what is the difference between cruel and embroidery now there's a beginner's question thank you in advance from Canada well that is a great question I love a beginner question thank you very very much um, it's it's always being confused and the word Jacobean is often confused and perhaps I'll go into that next week in a little more detail but embroidery is using a thread to make a decorative stitch so you're embellishing something it's not holding two pieces of cloth together it's making a, um, a design come to life on the surface of a piece of fabric now cruel work is actually from um, several different sources the word cruel uh, but and it can mean you know ball of wool in Saxon or it can mean the um, dag ends what we call the dag ends in the Cumbria in the north of England which are the long pieces of, um, of, of wool on the back end of the hind leg of a sheep and those are called cruels in some areas as well so we don't really know that there's a definitive word that ended up as cruel work um, but cruel work is using wool thread and it's usually onto a linen background traditionally because of course cotton did not come into cruel work or into this country anyway in Britain for a very long time so you know cotton was not common in the 17th century it was well less common in the 17th century and and started coming in to more common use with the trade with India and it wasn't really stitched onto cotton for quite a long time and then there were cotton and linen mix um, was the thing and you will see that you'll see a white thread going in one direction and the normal oatmeal colour of the beautiful linen that we harvest here in a co cooler climate that comes in um, on the on the other weave so you know you can actually see it but um, usually I use pure linen twill because actually the cotton shreds the linen uh, the the wool thread so really I much prefer to use linen which is gentler and has a much rounder fiber as well um, the way we have it woven there are lots and lots of reasons anyway we worked for many years on this so it's a whole thesis I'm afraid okay so that the difference between the cruel and embroidery is the fact that cruel work uses wool um, onto mainly linen twill okay then last one from Claire Barham Barham she said um, from Instagram again I do look forward to Sundays it is fascinating to see such beautiful work being explained in such detail and with such knowledge gosh she's nice isn't she um, well I think of Claire as all the things I don't know yet and will I live long enough to know it um, anyway she says I really loved the exotic pea hen do you think it has faded over the years pale pink is so subtle I wondered if the, that is the effect they were aiming for look forward to seeing more Oh, the one from Moncaster, the very gorgeous one that even Harriet Roberts didn't see. And I've only seen about twice because it never comes out. It's so precious. Well, uh, I think it has faded a little, that one. That's the one with the oranges on. So if you want to see that, please can Karen put another link. Sorry, Karen, onto sun last Sunday's video and you'll see that picture. It's amazing. Um, the pale pink is so subtle you're so right and that's what they learned to do in the second half of the 17th century and certainly going into the 18th century they were absolute masters at it so that piece being early 18th century you're seeing a great time for cruel work and i think the perfect time for cruel work for me personally is between 1680 and 
about 1740 and after that mm, <laughs> i don't think i think it all got mixed up with other things and then the victorians later on renamed all the stitches and oh we're all so confused about everything but if you look at all this, the, the the sunday videos you'll see there is a sort of a timeline between the designs and the 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 um the dyes that they could use to make these fantastic colors and the different breeds of sheep that produce the wool that makes the different stitches so that's all i've got to say i've gone over my 10 minutes i do apologize karen yet again and um my granddaughter has just walked in clicking something she's learned to click her fingers so i will leave you and say goodbye thank you bye bye